Netflix is big. I mean, like, really big. They've become the gold standard of web streaming and changed the media industry inside out in the last 10 years. How they made it possible? Netflix has been around for almost 20 years now, being the leader in DVD rental through mail in the United States. This business model consists of charging a flat fee to customers for the rental of an unlimited number of DVDs per month and shipping them through mail. The user is able to retain the disc for as long as they want, but they have to send it back in order to get new ones. The user can create a rental queue through the internet, so films are automatically sent to their house. This service was the main money input for the company until 2007, when they launched their web streaming service, but we'll talk about that later. What made Netflix so strong and popular between DVD users in the US and gave the company a user base of over 24 million subscribers wasn't the ability to get the disc through mail but instead a complex algorithm inside their website that predicted user taste based on the ratings of other people on the titles available, combined with metadata produced by the user when ordering their DVDs. So you'd automatically receive new discs to your home based on your likings without even having to search through Netflix database. This innovation was created well before many other competitors even existed and created a huge user-driven database for the company that predicted what those 24 million people wanted to watch. I don't know if you realize the importance of this, but being able to predict what 24 million people want to consume and being able to provide exactly that it's a gold mine. Based on this, and with the rise of the internet, Netflix saw yet another opportunity. They were experts on delivering user-selected content to their customers, but the hassle of having to deliver the disc to the home was expensive and not very practical. Then, in 2007, the revolution started. Netflix launched a web streaming service with over 20,000 titles and gave it for free to their entire user base. They would eventually charge separately for DVD and streaming services, but still it created enough momentum for the new service. It was an instant hit. On the same year of the launch, Netflix went from being the US Postal Service's largest customer to the largest user of bandwidth of the entire internet in the United States. And it just kept going. Within the first three years, the platform acquired the library of over 1 million titles, and the company signed contracts with the largest Hollywood studios for film distribution and film publishing, each contract being worth more than $1 billion. They had done it. They had changed the distribution chain for audiovisual media forever, but it wasn't enough. They went for it all. In 2013, Netflix announced their own series. It would be created by one of the greatest filmmakers of our era, David Fincher, and it would feature no one else but Kevin Spacey as the President of the United States of America. This show was House of Cards. This meant Netflix was no longer just a streaming service, but a new player in the film production market. But no one was sure if this would work. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this series. The entire first season of the show costed around $2 million, compared to the average $300 million per episode of The Walking Dead. This first season had an average rating of 100 million spectators per episode, compared to the 20 million viewers of The Walking Dead season finale for that same year. And to put a cherry above the pie, they've been nominated for the Emmy Awards three times and won once. So, a show being the first of its kind, and being produced for a fraction of the cost of a large production has swept over the audience and the critics alike. This might be something of a strange thing to witness, but it all has a logical explanation. The executives at Netflix and the showrunners saw an excellent opportunity to test their hypothesis as to what the people wanted to watch. First of all, the 2012 general elections had just passed, and the general consensus in the States was that of unhappiness around politics and their ways, which is shown in the spike of users searching for political dramas in the platform. And they also saw an opportunity to show to the industry and basically everyone in the world that Netflix didn't have to play by the rules of censorship and regulation of media in the US. Since then, Netflix has grown its original content availability and has started buying exclusive content for their library, like documentaries and more series. Just this year, they proved once more they can change the industry, when one of their documentaries, Ukraine Winter on Fire, was nominated for the Oscars. 